G'day gamers. If you're interested in making a detailed platformer just like this one, within Game Maker, using drag and drop, then keep watching. Before I start, I wanted to mention my course on using Game Maker to make a tile based platformer is still on sale at Udemy. Use the coupon code in the description and you'll get over 90% off. People have been enjoying it immensely and posting some really positive reviews, so please go check that out. Now, last tutorial, we created the player and coded the movement. But before we add the ability for the player to collide with walls, we need to prepare our code a little better. Drag and drop can get quite lengthy and messy, and it's better we set up our structure now at the start to make working with our project easier. We can structure our project better by utilizing scripts. Now, scripts are really useful in GameMaker and give various benefits. In this case, we want to use them to split our code up into more manageable chunks. And then we just work on the smaller chunks instead of trying to navigate the whole code in our step event. Now, the chunks I want to use are what I like to refer to as the basis of a character. The structure that pretty much every character, whether it's a player or an enemy, should have. Now, let's have a quick look at that structure. So the first thing we should do is capture the input. A player character does this from the person playing, where an enemy might get this from their own variables. Next, we use that input to calculate the movement. We don't apply it, we just work out where we will move. In the case of the previous tutorial, we are assigning a value to our HSP, our horizontal speed. Next, we apply that movement and therefore deal with any collisions that movement leads to. Lastly, we know where the character is, so we ensure we apply the appropriate animation. Now, when you create your own characters, remember this structure because it's really useful. Now, I'm going to apply this structure to our character. So let's create a script to capture our input. So we can right click on scripts and say create script. And then we can give it a name over here. I'm just going to call it git underscore input. So within our player, in our step event, where we are getting our input. So it's here, here. Now I can hold down shift and select multiple items. So those four are where we're capturing the input. Right click and cut it. And let's go into our script. Right click and paste it. So let's go back to our player. And now that we've moved it, we need to apply the script. So up here, there's an execute script block. Let's drag it over and let's select the script that we have, which is git input. So now this script will run and then the next line. So it's just like the code is right here. So let's create another script. And this one is our calc movement. So back in our player, we want to take where we're calculating movement. So essentially it's just this one. So I'm going to cut that out, paste it in our calc movement, close that down and ensure we put a calc movement script here. So our next structure item is collision. So let's add a collision script. Go to our player, take this item, which is our essentially our applying movement. We're applying our HSP to our X. So we want to cut that out, put it into our collision, and then apply that here by putting the collision script. And our last one is our animation. So let's create another script, call it anim, and then we want to take the animation. So here's where we're applying our facing, which I'm going to select that, and we can select all the way down to there by holding shift. And let's cut that out. Go to our anim script and paste it in. And lastly, go back to our player. And just under the collision script, we want to put an anim script. So if we press F5 now, we should see that our game will run the same as it did before. So we still have our player and we can still move just like before. So the benefit of scripting as well is even though it, one of the things for sure is it keeps everything cleaner, it also lets us utilize these scripts in other locations. So example, calculate movement and anim we can use in the enemy. And if we want to make changes to it, we only change it in one location and it'll work for both characters. So scripts are very useful when you've got some code that you're using in multiple locations 
because you only need to edit one of the versions to get the change happening in both spots. Great, now that we've set that up, we can move on to our collision code. So our collision code will allow the player to interact with walls or solids. So let's create a solid for them. So right click on sprites, go to create sprite. I'm gonna change the size just to 32 again, 32 by 32. And let's edit it and put something maybe like a red. I'm also gonna change the alpha and just lower it. So get the fill tool and just fill that in. Let's name this S underscore solid, so S standing for sprite. And we're gonna leave the origin up the top left. So let's make an object by right clicking and saying create object. I'm gonna call this O underscore solid, O standing for object. And we're gonna assign the sprite of the solid. Now let's go to our room and let's adjust the size. So I'm gonna cut the size down and make it only 640 wide and 360 high. That lets us work a little bit easier. I can use control and shift and the wheel mouse to scroll in and out, and I can hold the middle mouse button to move the room around. Now that's our room size set, but GameMaker also allows us to create a camera which will let us view certain parts of the room. So I'm gonna create a camera now, down under viewports and cameras. I'm going to enable viewports, and I'm going to set it to visible, now you can see that that will show what the camera is actually seeing. It's very large, so let's shrink that down. We want the camera width to be the same size that our room is. So 640 by 360. So now our camera is the same size as our room. And the other thing they have is a viewport. And a viewport will allow us to scale the view. So I'm going to double 640, and that's 1280. And I'm going to double the height of 360, and make it 720. So that's a HD resolution, and by doing that, it'll enable the game to be larger when we run it. So let's have a look at our room. Now over here in the room editor, we have some layers. Now the layers allow us to place the objects in the order that we want them to be seen on the screen. Anything that's up higher will be seen above the things that are down lower. So I'm gonna create a new layer, and it's gonna be a new instance layer. Now an Instance is basically a copy of an object. When you drag the player over here, this becomes an instance of this object. And instances get placed on instance layers. So I'm gonna call this layer player, and I'm gonna make another layer under player, and I'm gonna call this collision. So I've just clicked on it and pressed F2. So a quick way to edit it is just click on it, press F2, and then you can start typing. That's how I'm doing the editing there. So our collision layer will hold our collision blocks that the player will uh, collide with. So let's put some blocks there. I'm gonna drag across O solid. And you can click on it and make it wider. And if you want another one, you can click on it and do a control C and a control V to copy and paste. And we have another one here. I can do control C, control V. And got that one. So I'm going to make sure the player is down on this layer. So at the moment I can select these. I can't select the player. And that's because the player is on another layer. They are up here on instances. So I want to move them down to the player layer. So let's click on the player. Do control X to cut it out. Click on the player layer. And then control V to paste it in. Now the same thing, I can't click on these because they're on another layer. If you do want to click on other objects in the room editor, you can hold down P and that lets you click on any instance that's in the room. So let's take the player and move them down so they're sitting on the block. Now it won't let me because the grid is enabled. So you can do a couple of things. You can go up here and make your grid smaller. So I'll do 16 by 16 and now I can drag it on. Or if you even hold down the control key while you drag, you can actually move it without the grid. And then you can do a control Z to undo that and push it back down. So we have the player on the solid. We now need to do the colliding for when the player moves left and right. We don't want them to go beyond uh, the wall here. So let's talk about how we're gonna set up our collisions. So if I zoom in on the player, and we come over here near a wall. 
So if we imagine our player is here and they have a HSP, a horizontal speed set, that'll put them about here, for example. Now that's not going to work for us. We want the player only to be able to move to this point. So if they're here and they're moving all the way to here, that's not going to work. So what we need to do is say, if our movement where we currently are and where our HSP puts us is inside a solid, well then we need to do a collision check. We need to stop and say, okay, we can't go to there. Then we need to work out where can we go? If we're here, can we go there? Yes, okay, well then move there. Can we go here? No, okay, we can't go there. Well then move us back to here. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to work out where our HSP will take us. And if that's a collision, we're going to go back to where we were and we're going to move a little bit. And if the little bit is not a collision, then we'll move a little bit more. And then when we get to the point where we have got a collision, we'll just go back to where we didn't have the collision. So let's set that up by going into our collision code. Now we need to ask a question first. Like we said, can we move from our current location to where our X plus HSP is? So let's drag that in. Now our check for a collision is down here under collisions and we want the one that says if object at place. So drag that in and put it above and we want to check our O solid. Now we want to check our X plus HSP. So we click relative and that will make X plus HSP. We can click relative for Y because we don't want to change Y. So that's our test. And we need to know, did we collide with the wall? So if we did, let's go in here and let's set a variable. Actually, we won't want to set a variable, we want to set a temporary variable. So there's one here next to it called temp. We don't need this variable later, it's just for this test. So you should use temporary variables when you don't need to use the variable later on. So I'm going to call it collide and I'm going to set it to false. So we're assuming we haven't collided with anything and we'll test it to see if we did. So if we go back to our room and just check where we're at, we were here. We found a test that said this is a collision. So at the moment we're still here. We haven't applied any movement yet. So now we need to check. Can we move a little bit? What about a little bit more? What about a little bit more? So let's do that check where we're constantly checking can we move. And we can do that with a while loop. If we go down here, there are some loops and one of them is a while loop. So let's drag that down. And let's look at our collide variable. And we'll say why it's still equal to false. Well, then we can keep trying to move. Let's just make this a bit bigger so we can see what we're doing. So let's check again. Let's get our collision and saying, do we currently have a collision? So we're looking for our O solid and we want to move. This time we're not going to move HSP because that'll push us all the way into the block. We know that's a collision already because we did that test here. But we want to move only a small amount. And we can move one pixel at a time by looking at the sign of HSP. And the sign will bring back whether this is a positive or a negative. It'll bring back one or negative one only. So if we then add the sign of HSP to X, we're moving one pixel at a time. And then that will let us test how close we can get to the wall before we collide with it. So once again, Y is relative. And this time though, we're looking for not a collision. We want to say, if this is not a collision, well then we want to move there. So because we did a test and if we move one pixel, there's no collision, let's apply that to our X. So our X variable is just going to be sine HSP relative meaning that we are adding this to our X. So I've added one to the X, we've moved across one, we're a little bit closer to that wall, and then what will happen is it'll go back up here and we'll do the test again. Now, if we did have a collision, we need to put an else in here. So we got a collision, so we need to do something else. And what we need to do is say that we collided. We actually collided with the wall. So our collide variable is now set to true. And by setting it to true, it means up here, the loop is no longer going to happen and we'll jump out of it. 
So back in our room, we went to here, which is our X plus HSP. We found a collision. We went back. We tried to move one pixel. It let us move one pixel. We tried to move one more. It didn't let us move one more. So we ended up just staying here. Now the other thing we need to do is we need to make sure our HSP is set to zero. So under our collide, we say HSP is equal to zero, meaning we are no longer able to move, we've hit a wall. Now we also need to do sure we assign our HSP to our X, and if there's no collision, that'll just get assigned as normal. So let's press F5 and test that out. So when we move, we find that we hit a collision right on the wall there. Now that's our horizontal collision done. In the next tutorial, I'll go through how to do the vertical collision and we'll add a jump to the player. Now don't forget to like and subscribe or follow me on Twitter to get the next video in the series. Thanks for joining me. I'll talk to you then.